This is 5 and 10 from Skywatch TV for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. I'm Derek Gilbert. Tomorrow is Independence Day here in these United States, so we will be off tomorrow. And the 5th being Friday, we will be off to Friday as well. So we will be returning on Monday. If you're outside the United States, uh, please just know we're on holiday. Everything is fine. We will see you on Monday, and we thank you for your indulgence. Item number five today, Joe Biden. Will he quit or won't he? The Biden team insists that he's in it for the long term, but the buzzards are circling inside the Democratic Party. Other Democrats smelling blood in the water, most notably Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who reportedly sent a secret advance team to Washington, D.C. to begin laying the groundwork for a possible presidential run. The team has been on maneuvers, according to one source cited by the Daily Mail, meeting with Democratic officials. Interestingly, Governor Whitmer's got a uh, biography going to be published next Tuesday. Timing not coincidental. Title of the book is True Gretch, play on the title of the old John Wayne movie remade with Jeff Bridges, True Grit. It's better than her nickname in Michigan, which is Big Gretch. So if you say that too quickly, it sounds like Big Gretch, which is not, I think, the image she's trying to project. Anyway, uh, Whitmer has been denying reports that she's maneuvering into position. In other words, she's claiming to be loyal to President Biden while maneuvering to be the one to step in and take his place. And apparently donors seem to be lining up behind Whitmer as opposed to Gavin Newsom, governor of California, or Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, a couple of other names being mentioned as possible replacements. The bottom line here is the Democrats want a candidate who can at least plausibly account for getting the most ballots in November. Not necessarily the most votes, the most ballots. And uh, that plausibility with President Biden is now gone. So uh, now that said, Bloomberg News reports that the Democratic National Committee is considering formally nominating President Biden as its nominee, their nominee, as early as uh, July 21st, when there is a uh, committee meeting for the DNC convention, which comes up in August. They'd already planned to nominate him early to get him on the ballot in Ohio because um, there's a deadline of August 7th in Ohio, which is before the DNC convention in Chicago. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Just get your popcorn. It's going to be an interesting summer and fall here in the United States. Topic number four today, the Supreme Court. Liberals lost their minds Monday after that ruling by the Supreme Court on presidential immunity for official acts while in office. This has been taken as a big win for Donald Trump, especially as it relates to his uh, case filed by special counsel Jack Smith, the four felony counts. Any kind of a win for Donald Trump is like an insanity pill for never Trumpers. Some going so far as to publicly call for President Biden to eliminate Donald Trump as a threat to national security. Hey, it's an official act, right? Call out scene, SEAL Team 6. One of these people is a presenter for the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. Let, let's hope he is sacked for that remark because calling for the assassination of another human being is just absolutely reprehensible. It don't matter which side of the political divide you're on, that is just absolutely beyond the pale. Anyway, the Supreme Court, back in 1982, uh, ruled that the president has at least some degree of immunity. The 82 case was uh, against Richard Nixon. Uh, it, it ruled that the president had at least some immunity, uh, especially as regards civil damages for acts taken, official acts taken by the president of the United States. Now, Nixon once infamously said, if the president does it, it's not illegal. The Supreme Court has not gone that far, nor did it go this far in the ruling Monday morning. But liberals need to think very, very carefully before overturning this idea of presidential immunity. The president can't govern if every single minute action that he takes could possibly lead to him being prosecuted after he leaves office, as has happened to Donald Trump. Uh, for example, President Obama back in 2011 ordered a drone hit on an American citizen and a mom of Yemeni descent who is back in Yemen, Anwar al awlaki he was born in New Mexico. He's an American citizen, entitled to the same constitutional protections as you and me, regardless of what he's done, which means if you're going to prosecute him uh, to the extent of taking his life, you've at least got to bring him to a court of law and have him found guilty by a jury of his peers. But instead, the president, on his own authority, with no oversight by Congress or the judicial branch, ordered a drone strike, had him killed, and al-Awlaki's 15-year-old son, Abdul Rahman al-Awlaki, 
killed just a few days later in another American drone strike. Now, liberals, do you really want to eliminate immunity for the president and have Barack Obama brought up on charges for conspiracy to commit murder? Uh, they, they don't think through their actions. Eliminating the so-called nuclear option in the Senate, the filibuster, is what allowed President Trump and former Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to push through a lot of very conservative justices, both at the federal level and to the Supreme Court. So um, they may be shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, my, my point here is, is not that the president should have the constitutional authority to order the elimination of other American citizens without any oversight. That, I believe, goes beyond the constitutional authority of the president, or at least it should we need to think very carefully about who should have that kind of power here in the United States. I don't think the framers of the Constitution intended for the president to be able to order hits like a mafia don. But it appears that liberals are okay with that power as long as they're the only ones who get to use it. And that says something about our ability to live together in this republic. We know that Biden's Department of Homeland Security, Justice Department, have gone out of their way to target people of faith people in the military, military veterans, and supporters of Donald Trump as threats to national security. Topic number three, Israel. It appears that a date's been set for the invasion of Lebanon. Israel expected to begin a ground offensive in the second half of July. This is according to the German publication Bilt. Uh, Western diplomats think that if Hezbollah does not stop shelling northern Israel, the ground operation could begin the third or fourth week of this month. The newspaper also reported that Hezbollah does not intend to stop shelling Israel and insists on the demand to stop the war in Gaza first, which probably not going to happen, but we pray that cooler heads will prevail. Item number two today, China. Um, if push comes to shove over Taiwan, the United States military could find itself without spare parts. China's got a chokehold over U.S. military supplies, which leaves us at their mercy in the event of an all-out war. This is according to a warning from a former army general, the Daily Mail, again doing more investigative journalism than American counterparts. Retired U.S. Army Major General John Ferrari said he had grave concerns about America's dependence on China to equip its military. Chinese manufacturers, critical, critical suppliers in U.S. defense systems, providing uh, essential technology and raw materials used in everything from air-to-air -air missiles to fighter jets. Uh, General Ferrari was a deputy commander for NATO in Afghanistan, so he's got some history. He admitted that Beijing could cripple America's military just by cutting off supply lines. A startling report earlier this year showed the Chinese firms have a stranglehold on 12 critical technologies vital to U.S. national security, including nuclear modernization, hypersonic missiles, and space technologies. And perhaps most important, more than 40% of the semiconductors that sustain Department of Defense computers made in China. Coming up, orange man bad, but it's not who you think it is. I'll explain next on 5 and 10. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want to take a quick break to tell you how you can get your copy of both of these incredible new works in the Out of This World and Gate of the Gods special offer. When you order this incredible offer from the SkywatchTVStore.com, you'll receive the brand new book, Out of This World, Are UFOs Aliens, Spirits, or Pure Hokum? by Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis that exposes the faults in both the science and theology regarding the existence of UFOs. The very real possibility that UFOs are manned by extraterrestrial beings much smarter and far more spiritual than humans that are preparing to deceive mankind as we approach the biblical end times. The recent surge of UFO activity all around the globe and why Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis is calling for Project UFO a national strategy to determine if we face an existential threat and so much more. But that's not all. You'll also receive Gate of the Gods, Revelation, the Messiah, and the Second Coming of Babylon by Tyler Gilreath that brings to life the war between Jesus Christ and the power of darkness as illuminated in the book of Revelation. 
a cosmic end time struggle between the Hebrew king of promise and the Old Testament gods of Babylon. The hidden Babylonian framework in the book of Revelation that can only be seen through ancient Near Eastern eyes, unmasking Babylon the Great and more. Also included in this must-have special offer for a very limited time, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis's best-selling book, Give Me Liberty, Not Marxism, and his book, Kings of the East, China's Plan to Eliminate America and Impose a Communist World Order. All of these items hold a retail value of $84. Yours now for your donation of only $45, which includes free shipping to all U.S. orders. So don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special opportunity. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Out of This World and Gate of the Gods special offer right now. Item number one today, the Orange Man Bad is not Donald Trump. As I told you on Monday, Joe Biden's family pointed fingers at everybody but Joe Biden for his historically bad performance at the debate last Thursday night. One of the things they were angry about were the makeup people at CNN who said they uh, made him up to look pallid and pale. And of course, combine that with his, frankly, his elderly elderly man shuffle and um, hoarse voice. It just made him appear frail. Well, um, Monday evening, President Biden addressed the country to respond to the Supreme Court's ruling on presidential immunity. It appeared he had a fresh spray tan, a coat of bronzer that made him look, well, a lot like his opponent in the upcoming election, Donald Trump. (laughs) He looked kind of orange. Ironic. It's uh, another prophecy by the uh, satirical website Babylon B that has come true. They predicted some time ago that Biden would unveil a cool new look and a campaign slogan, make United States superb a second time. (laughs) Some of the finest political insight in America today is coming from the Babylon Bee. Well, this week on Skywatch TV, we continue our four-part series on two brand new books from Defender Publishing, Gate of the Gods, that's Bob L. Babel, by Tyler Gilreath, and Out of This World, a look at the UFO phenomenon from Pentagon insider Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis. This is, uh, these are essential books for your, uh, your reference library. Please, oh, hello, Grace. Uh, please check out the programs. You can see all of them right now at our website, skywatchtv.com. You can also catch them over the air. This week's broadcast schedule posted at skywatchtv.com slash channels we are on uh, roku and apple tv if you've got the skywatch tv channels for your set top box you can also catch us over the internet rumble.com slash skywatch tv youtube.com the main program at skywatch television but better yet make sure we never get canceled by downloading our free app to your smartphone or tablet this bypasses the gatekeepers of big tech big tech that is right yeah and uh, brings all of our content right into your uh, device, whether it's iOS, Android, or Amazon, Kindle, Fire, Phone, or Tablet. We've got links to all of those apps, links to those app stores anyway, at skywatchtv.com slash app. Follow us online, 5 and 10, at YouTube. It's youtube.com slash at 5 and 10. On X, formerly Twitter, at 5 underscore in underscore 10. And remember, tomorrow we will be, uh, tomorrow and Friday, we will be off for the Independence Day holiday. So until Monday, have a blessed weekend. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Derek Gilbert. This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV. Hi friends, Pastor Mike Spalding here to announce the Go Therefore 2024 conference. We will gather Friday and Saturday, July the 26th and 27th, at Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, Ohio. This year, we welcome the following scholars, Bible teachers, and researchers, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Joe Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Judd Burton, Pastor Paul Begley, Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Greg Reed, Tom Dunn, and Dr. Sherry Tenpenny will be doing a book signing for her new book, Walking with God. 
live stream is available. Ministry tables are available for like-minded ministries. Hotel and other information is on the conference website, www.gothereforeconference.com. Go therefore conference.com. Looking forward to seeing you.